Hey everyone, I'm Starcraft Dad, and today we'll be looking at the Zerg strategy called Six Pool. So the idea is that the uh, Zerg player will stay on their six initial drones, they won't build anything else, and they'll save up their money to uh, build a spawning pool as soon as possible. This replay was sent to me by uh, General Disarray, he's in the blue here. Now, the surprising thing about this, or maybe not so surprising, is that his opponent is doing the same thing. So you can see Sam Hall 7 is staying on these six drones, that's the six and six pool, and building his spawning pool. So the first thing um, that we should notice about these players is that they're doing a slightly different scouting um, strategy here. So Sam Hall 7 is sending his um, overlord over to the close by air position. So there's four different starting locations on the map. So one of them is that there's two right here. Those, these are cross positions relative to each other. But there's a position that's close by air. So you see Sam Hall 7 making his way over here. And then from Sam Hall 7's point of view, there's a close by ground position. And that would be over here. And so you can see Sam Hall 7 using his drone to scout the close by ground while he's using his overlord to scout by air. And you can see General Disarray decide to go for a counterclockwise pattern. Now, I think Sam Hall 7's is going to be a little bit faster as far as being able to see all the different base locations and see what's going on. And that's um, a very important thing about this build as well, is that it's very important for you to go into the opponent's base and see what they're doing. So, in the case of um, General Disarray, we'll rewind the clock just a little bit. So, when his drone comes up here, and we'll slow this down and follow him. So, if we look at uh, General Disarray's vision, He's going to bring this drone up, and he needs to go as far as about to here. Because what he's looking for is General Disarray wants to know um, whether Sam Hall 7 is going for a more balanced build, or whether he's also going for an early, uh, an early rush build. And at this point, um, General Disarray can tell, just by hovering his mouse over the spawning pool, how much of it is finished. And he can also tell, so he can compare that to his own time, and you can see that he, um, if he was kind of glancing back and forth, he could tell that Sam Hall 7 is slightly ahead. Now, at first you might think that this is um, a big deal, and oh, he's ahead of me, and his Zerglings are going to come out faster than mine. But as you'll see, um, uh, once these Zerglings are built, it doesn't really matter um, in this particular case. Now, if um, your opponent is not doing some kind of early aggression build, um, the sooner that your units are built is better, but you know a couple of seconds is not going to matter that much. So I wouldn't obsess too much about trying to get your zerglings to come out at exactly a certain time. Uh, the main thing is you just want to get them out soon. Now in this case, what we're going to see is a variation, a difference in these two strategies. So these six zerglings from uh, Sam Hall Seven are racing out, and then so are General Disarray's. Now one difference between these two players is Sam Hall Seven did a rally into General Disarray's um, base. And what that means is that his units are going to move towards General Disarray's base, but they're not going to attack anything on the way. Whereas General Disarray, uh, I think he did an attack move, which means that um, he selected his units, he pressed attack, and then he picked a location inside Sam Hall 7's base. So that means that General Disarray's units, by default, if the players don't do any more actions on the screen, um, his units are going to attack Sam Hall 7's. Now, it's also important to note that at this point the players are doing mirror strategies. And these six Zerglings versus these six Zerglings, this should be a pretty even fight. If these two uh, sets enter, you know, fight with each other, um, it all comes down to micro as to whether one player will have a few Zerglings left at the end. But as you'll see here, oops, um, Sam Hall 7's Zerglings did not attack at all. And so General uh, Disarray's Zerglings are all green. They're all fully health. They have full health. And Sam Hall 7 Zerglings are pretty badly damaged. This one's down to 10 hit points here. So um, Sam Hall 7 continues to send these six into General Disarray's base. There's a good chance he's not even paying attention. Now, however, General Disarray has grabbed these units and brought them back in. Now you can see the dotted line, so that Sam Hall 7's controlling them um, now. Now, here we're going to pause again. And uh, this is a very this is a very important um, aspect here to doing a rush build or doing rush attacks, whether you're attacking or defending. And that is know that the 
defender has uh, what they call defender's advantage, meaning that the defender has, in general, has the advantage. And in the in the game of StarCraft, uh, StarCraft II, there is, in general, defender's advantage. So in this case, uh, these six Zerglings um, are at a huge disadvantage in this space right now. Uh, for one, A, they're damaged. That, that's very true. But let's say that they weren't. Let's say that these Zerglings came in full health. Um, they're actually at a disadvantage in the space, and that's because although they are matched one for one with the defending Zerglings, these six here, um, there are, if you look here, there are seven drones here. Now, these drones can fight. Um, a lot of players don't use their workers to fight, but each drone, if you look here, does five damage. And if you look at each Zergling, they also do five damage. Now, they attack um, twice as fast. That's the weapon speed you can see there. So the Zerglings are faster. They do more damage more quickly than the drones do. But the drones do quite a bit of damage. So these drones, combined with these defensive Zerglings, um, even in an ideal case for the red player, um, his Zerglings are going to all die. And there's a possibility, depending on how well um, General Disarray manages his units, that he may not lose any units in that fight. And on top of that, um, you can see that General Disarray has some, uh, if you look down here, you can see that he's got some Zerg cocoons running, so he's building four Zerglings as we speak. So as soon as these four pop, now General Disarray will have ten Zerglings plus his drones against these six. So these six are at a huge disadvantage coming into this space. So he, they go in, they attack a couple of, of uh, drones here, they're going to kill this one, and then they're going to get into a fight with these Zerglings, and then even before these four pop, uh, these red Zerglings are going to die, and then General Disarray will have the advantage. So now he's got eight, and if we go to the unit counting station, you can see that uh, he now has eight Zerglings compared to Sam Hall 7's four. And he's going to send these eight straight over to the other base. So another aspect of the uh, uh, Zerg race is that they heal over time, and so you can see uh, General Disarray's Zerglings, even though they were damaged, they are slowly healing over time. So now, again, we see almost a repeat of the previous um, set of decisions. So Sam Hall 7 had a second group of four um, being built after his first set of six, so that's pretty typical. But once again, he sent these uh, his Zerglings that were built down on a rally down to General Disarray's base. So these Zerglings, again, are going to get attacked first before they react, and the first Zergling dies before he even reacts to attack these guys. So now, uh, that's another four Zerglings lost. So Sam Hall 7 has lost 10 Zerglings now, um, with only, what, maybe three kills to their name? So these damaged Zerglings from General Disarray are going to come in. Now, again, <laughs> um, now we're back into uh, that attacking defender um, scenario. So here we've got your eight Zerglings coming in from General Disarray, Sam Hell 7 with four. Now had he saved those four Zerglings that he sent down earlier, because they didn't really delay these Zerglings that much, had he saved those four, he would have had eight fully healthy Zerglings to defend from these slightly damaged eight Zerglings from General Disarray. And as we mentioned before, he would have also had these drones that he could use to help. Now, um, Sam Hall 7 is building a spine crawler, which is a really good idea uh, as far as defending a Zerg 6 pool or uh, any kind of early aggression. A spine crawler, um, if we uh, jump up to the uh, help here, we can see that a spine crawler has um, uh, a whopping 300 life and 2 armor which means that it will take 100 Zergling hits to kill a spine crawler. So a spine crawler, once it's built, is really strong. On top of that, it does 25 damage. Um, it's got a slower weapon speed than the Zerglings, but 25 is almost a one-hit kill for a spine crawler. Adding a couple of Zerglings and a couple of attacking drones in a spine crawler, one spine crawler by itself can hold off quite a bit. Now, the trick with the spine crawler is it takes 50 seconds to build. Um, and uh, Another alternative is to build a queen. If we rewind just a little bit, I think maybe even a little bit more. No? Okay, here we go. So about the time that uh, Sam Hall 7 sent these first four Zerglings out who were going to die, he started building a queen, which was an okay idea too. Uh, queens have a bunch of hit points. They can heal if they've had enough time to store up energy. They can heal other units. And their attack is on par with a, with a, uh, a couple of Zerglings. 
but you'll see here that his queen is building away and at this point time is very critical right and he decides here to cancel the queen so now by canceling the queen he's lost that time uh, I think it's debatable whether he should have just continued building that queen now of course I think his best option would have been to build a queen right away um, or sorry to build a spine crawler right away instead of a queen the other thing you'll notice is that right here he has 155 minerals and so he could build a second spine crawler. So he could have built two. He's, he's got a handful of drones, but he could have built two because clearly this game, as he can tell when he went into uh, General Disarray's base, he saw that this game is going to be this is going to be a fast game, right? Both of these players going for an early attack. So he could have built a second spine crawler, and even if the first one gets killed, the second one will might will likely survive. He could have also placed it in such a in such a way that there's um, less surface area. He could place it here in the back or place it next to these other buildings, trying to make um, an area where uh, fewer zerglings can surround the building to kill it. But for whatever reason, he chose this area right here. So these uh, eight zerglings, once again, are coming up to the base. I'll speed up just a little bit. And so uh, we can see here that Sam Hall 7 had a variety of options to defend his base. And um, unfortunately for him, he will do none of them. Well, I guess he did one of them. He switched to a spine crawler, which was a good idea. But as you can see, the spine crawler, halfway built, has half as many hit points. And instead of using these zerglings and these drones to save the spine crawler, which would have been his only um, hope at surviving, um, instead he just leaves the spine crawler on its own. Now here you can see the surface area in action. All of these zerglings are able to surround the spine crawler and do more damage the more of them that are surrounding it. Now you can see that there was an advantage of him placing it where he did here, kind of close to this spawning pool, and uh, he's got a, a Zerg cocoon started here because some of these Zerglings weren't able to make it all the way around. So it wasn't as you know optimal of a surround as possible. But um, you know again he could by you know taking these um, workers and these Zerglings and trying to hold off this group. Um, he could have finished the spine crawler, and if you can imagine here, if there was another spine crawler back here that was almost completed, um, if you look here, the uh, the zerglings do a pretty good job, and they kill it when it's almost done. But he could have placed it back here. So um, in this case, uh, and this is pretty much the end of the game. <laughs> these zerglings are just going to kill these these four down here. Then they're going to come and kill the drones. And I don't know if the zerglings would have had a a pretty good chance if these drones had come in to attack if Sam Hall 7 would have had a chance there. Um, but the point that um, I want to make here is that you know both of these players went for an early attack and you know it looks like you know oh general destroy run and you might say oh well he just did a better rush and um, as you saw earlier Sam Hall 7 was actually faster on his rush time uh, he had kind of a more um, general diverse uh, scouting method that made use of his different units um, so, I mean, I would almost say, I think Sam Hall 7 um, did, you know, a slightly better rush speed-wise. But you saw that at that very beginning, on that first attack, General Disarray decided to go defensive. He, uh, he brought back those units, um, he brought back those units to defend, which is, you know, I, I think that's a very key, um, a very key point here, is that both of these players, this game was won and lost based on defense. Uh, General Disarray brought his Zerglings back here um, to defend. He sent them out to attack, but then he brought them back as soon as he saw that an attack was coming. That gave him a huge lead. And had Sam Hall 7 done a defense in return when General Disarray came back with building a couple of spine crawlers, he would have had a huge lead. And that kind of leads me to my um, final point about this scenario of, a, of, of rushing, is that um, in addition to Blizzard populating the one versus one maps, with maps that ha are larger so that there's a longer rush distance because you saw that time to travel between both bases was very important. Um, I early In an earlier replay I uh, timed that it took about 50 seconds for the Zerglings to go from top to bottom. And so that's enough time to build a spine crawler. So if you have uh, a scout up here waiting to see when the Zerglings come out, you can wait to build your spine crawler at that time or two spine crawlers at that time. And so the uh, the conclusion from that is that a player that's looking to defend with that rush distance being long um, they have time to build up a defense. The defense only needs to be there just in time for when the attack happens not a moment sooner. So that's it for this replay analysis and I'm StarCraft Dad and I'm signing off. Alright, see you guys next time.